Guys, do you want to know what performed the best for me in my fittings this year? Let's take a look. Hey guys, I'm Danny Farrell, Master Club Fitter at Second Swing, partnering up with Thomas Campbell. Thanks for joining me today. So today I've kind of built a bag of some of my favorites, the best results I've seen in fittings this year. So we'll kind of jump in, go from top to bottom, why everything's in the bag and what players fit into those. Very good. I'm always excited to see what other fitters are finding that's performing really well in the, in the right. bay. And it's nice to have Sometimes have go-tos, not so much because everyone's different, but it's nice right. to know what does perform well and mm -hmm. what spins more, what spins less, right. what seems like it's more forgiving. Yeah. So it's always intriguing to find out from our other fitters, and we have a lot of fitters at our store. Yeah, working our way to the top side of the bag. I mean, Tito has just delivered this year. So right, this is the TSI three. Correct. Yep. Yep. And we've seen a huge influx of higher swing speed players, baseball players, other sports. You know, where we need something to help kill spin. We need something with versatility. I mean, 16 settings down in the hosel itself, partnered up with a weight track on the back end too. It's a fitter's dream. I mean, ball speed off the face is incredible. That's why it got put in play on uh, PGA Tour and other tours right away. Yeah, I've always, I've always found it interesting. Ever since like the 917 line, mm -hmm. the TS2 and the, the, so the TS line and the TSI line, yeah that ball speed's got faster with Tylus, and it's the ball spun a lot less. Yeah, and that's what we're chasing. And that's what you're chasing. You want, you want more distance. Yep. Uh, now, staying with driver, Okay. now, I'm just curious, has there been some golf shafts that has performed well for all of you? Were they exotic ones, or even just the, the standard ones that come with the, with the models? Sure. Has there any, been any that you feel like have performed pretty well? Yeah, I mean, the, the stock shafts are fantastic. Manufacturers do a lot of time on fitting other players to, you know, what package are they going to put in for their, for their line. So a lot of players fit into the stock. But we do also have a luxury of having the Tour AD line as well, the XC and IZ um, line that helps with titles as well. So for players that chase a little bit better feel, and I've seen good, good results with that. I've also seen stock perform, if, if not better, too. It's just player dependent. Yeah, it's a nice little added bonus that Titleist and Graphite Design, they, they kind of partner together where yeah. they're not going to charge you full retail for that particular right. golf shaft yeah. in there as well. But yeah, that's, that's important to bring up is their, I hate to use the word stock, but their golf, the golf shafts are designed for the club head. Sure. Uh, they're, they're designed that way, they perform yeah. well. And like you said, 90%, 95% of golfers are going to fit into that particular golf shaft. Right. Golf shaft's always going to be a little bit player dependent mm -hmm. and feel is going to be different, right. but there's plenty of options right. before having to pay for a more premium shaft. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and that's why we fit at different clubs as well, because every shaft bends and loads differently. Every player bends and loads a shaft differently too. So we got to pair that up, but this head has been lights out for me in 2021. Perfect. So TSI dri three driver. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on to fairy wood. Yep. So next up. Fairway wood, kind of same principle that I'm chasing here in the driver is fit into the three wood too. This is an absolute bomber off the tee. Sim 2 titanium. Now mm -hmm. you also have the option with the rocket as well if right. you really want a bomber off the tee at the yep. 13 and a half. Yep. Plus you got that adjustability there too. Absolutely, yeah. You can crank it up to about 17. You can knock it down to 13. You can also make it sit four degrees upright too. So those, for those players that are outside in or struggle to make the ball go a little bit straighter, that upright setting is a huge win, huge right. win. And that's with the 15 degree, but if you had that 13 and a half, obviously you could go 11 and a half. Absolutely. Or even, yeah, so Absolutely. You, you, could, you could almost turn it into a driver for the golfers that don't hit a driver very well. Right. Uh, moving back to, you got a 315 degree here. Yep. Um, why is the Sim 2 tiny titanium performed so well? Why has it been such a rocket, do you think? Well, I, I think it all goes back to the center of gravity where it is in the club head. You know, you see other manufacturers like the Apex UW, everything is moving closer to the club face. Players are getting faster. We've seen a huge influx of that this year, unbelievable speed. So there's only one way to do it, get that weight more forward to help them show less loft and impact, lower that spin rate down a little bit. So this is a huge, huge win there. Got it. Yeah, and even, I remember even spinning, you know, the sim line was pretty good as Absolutely. well. Absolutely, mean, yeah. The titanium faces that uh, Taylor made make, they're, they're hot. They Absolutely. definitely are hot. Yeah. Absolutely. And partnered with that V-Steel on the sole as well, so that helps kind of with turf interaction this way as well. It's 
That's the reason why it's going in the bag for sure. All right. Well, two clubs in, two different manufacturers. I like that. So yeah. I like to give versatility in a bag because 100%. you know we're we're not under you know any influence by any manufacturers. No. We fit whatever is best for the player. Right. A player could walk out with six different manufacturers in their yeah. bag if we're that particular club is going to be best for that. Absolutely. So we're not tied to any particular manufacturer. We're not pushing any way. We're just trying to figure out whatever. The right. golfer needs. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. moving on to the third club. I know you got another brand. I do, yep. So we're uh, stepping into Peng here. So this is the 425, um, loft-wise at 19 degrees. So what I've been seeing this year, I like to call it almost a numbers match, where if I have a three wood, player might go into a three hybrid, or a four wood, four hybrid, five wood, five hybrid, you know, for that gapping purpose. But at 15 degrees, this is a perfect pairing this is more so that Sam 2 is more so that bomber off the tee, low spin, lower flight, whereas the ping is going to help launch it up a little bit. That center of gravity is much, much lower for a hybrid head to help it get up in the air. This has been on rail for players. Right. And now I know spin consistency is spin being again an interesting concept <laughs> that, that pings come out with their, with their furry woods and, and their hybrids. And yeah. that's nice if you catch a little low on the face. That spin rate or tension yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. And you still have the flexibility to play around with loft and lie. Yeah. Uh, you got the flat settings with, with these, which is a, a great option because let's face it, a lot of players that play a hybrid, they may hook the ball to with a hybrid. Me. And we don't like to see the ball go straight left. Right. So by flattening out the club a little bit is definitely gonna help out too. Absolutely, absolutely. So really, really good win there. Ready for another brand? I'm ready for another brand, yeah. You've, you've, got, you've got, got a few different in here. All right. Let's this. get one that's a little sneaky. So irons, okay. Yeah. Oh, we're going into Strixon. Oh, very nice. Mm -hmm. So Strixon, um, kind of a, a not well-known brand yet, but I think it's gaining more traction, especially after Hideki won the Masters with it's, Strixon. It's very good. It's sneaky good. And yeah, yeah it, it probably should be more well-known. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, a couple good things about the ZX-5. They make a couple different models. The Z Forge Blade, um, the ZX-7, which is a little bit more forgiving. ZX-5 kind of right in between there. That ultimately the ZX-4 is their max, uh, max game improvement iron. So yep. this is kind of the third tier up for forgiveness wise, but it's got a great look to it. One of the biggest things I've seen in the bay, take a look at this hole. It's completely different than any other yeah, iron. Kind of round it, well, right? it's kind of sharp and kind of push back a Absolutely. little bit. Absolutely. So VT sole. VT. Yep. yep, so golfers that have a steep attack angle, mm -hmm. they may spin the ball a little too much. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So it's gonna help them deliver that club through the turf a little bit easier. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. And center gravity is a little bit different on this as well, so it has promoted a little bit lower spin for players. So I love that idea. It's got a great look to it. You know, a little bit thinner top line than a game improvement iron, but you have a lot of forgiveness loaded in your back pocket. It's been fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's an awesome club and forged. I'm, it's forged and also I like the idea of that you can combo set it with the ZX7. One of my favorites, yes. Right, yeah, yeah. because let's face it, in your, your scoring clubs, you might want a little bit more predictability of yeah. how it's going, the ball's gonna fly. Yep. And one thing I found interesting with these is the top lines are basically the exact same with ZX5 right. and ZX7. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, well done, Srixon. I mean, really, really well done there. All right, so moving on to wedges. Yep. Is there a particular wedge? So you've got all three the same same model. Do you like to stick with the same model with the wedges? I, I generally do. Okay. You know, once a player likes, you know, the feel of one, it's easy to kind of adapt and go down through it. Yep. Just by changing loft and grinds. So reason why I've got the ping wedges, um, we're playing a cavity back iron, right? Something designed to launch the ball hot. I don't want a big gap distance wise between those. So I need more of a cavity back wedge or it's one of my favorites at least to fit. Something that's got more forgiveness. You know, like Tidal is a little bit less forgiving than that. But this is gonna be more forgiving. It's got that cavity back in it. It's got a nice wide sole for us in Minnesota as well because turf conditions are pretty soft generally. Yep. And we're seeing a lot of players that are coming in a little bit steep, right? So you can see kind of my, my recipe. Players that are steep, the VT sole there, right? And then into the wedges, more bounce there as well. More of a cavity back design there. So loft wise on the pitching wedge, um, I believe is at 45 on, or 46 on the ZX5. So we jump into 50, 54 and 58. Right? Got it. So really, really good setup there. Um, I have to ask you too, so when you're doing these fittings, do you like to have the gap wedge with the set or without the set? I, I knew that question would come up, <laughs> absolutely. So 
I think it's player dependent. Uh, players that you know are consistent hitting the middle of the club face. I'm worried about that flyer potential if I throw a gap wedge in the bag for yep. them. You know, but for players that are more recreational, getting out there and want that forgiveness, that I'll throw that gap wedge in the set for them. Mm -hmm. But in this case, you know, I'm going away from that, trying to gain more spin, more consistency with uh, the ping wedges at the bottom of the bag. Got it. Yeah, that's the exact answer that I would tell anyone there too. Is mm -hmm. if you if you like to chip with your 52 or your, if your gap wedge, yeah. you might you might want to consider playing that that gap wedge that's a little more versatile right. as opposed to the wedge with the set. Now, yep. if you're just trying to use it to fill a gap and just swing, and you maybe your skill level is not quite as as good as a as, as a better player, right. then that's when you keep the gap wedge with the set. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four. So this is the fifth manufacturer in here. We've got the putter we're, we're talking about. Yep. I like this putter. Mm -hmm. I like this brand. I've actually played Bettinardi putters quite a lot in, in my golf career. Same, same. And why do you play Betty? The, the feel is incredible and the look 100%. is really, really good. Yeah, you're going to pay a little bit more premium for them. That, I mean, they're precisionally milled. Correct. Um, yep. And they're, they feel good and look incredibly good. Absolutely. But yeah, I've, uh, I've definitely dabbled with Betanardi parties in and out for quite a while. Same, same. I, I love the feel and, you know, it's just a complete different um, way to go about putting for me at least. It's, you know, a lo little bit nicer, less offset on the, on the putter itself. Generally, they have a little bit more toe hang too. But they do have other mallets that can be, you know, put in the bag for more resistance and twist to help players out there too. This is just one of my favorites, look-wise and feel-wise. Okay. Yep. And that's the Studio Stock 17. Yep. And that's the. That's the. Okay. So is that the little bit more in the in the neck here, or is yeah. that? That's pretty face balance. No, it's got about 45 degrees. Yeah. Okay. A little bit more on the toe hang. Got it. Yep. 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 And then with regards to like toe hang fitting fitting golfers, if you yep. notice any general trends if you lean towards a more face balance in general or I mean we all know MOI we like forgiving generally speaking right. your mallets can be a little bit more forgiving than others yeah yeah um, I mean the, the first question I ask is how much do you work on your putting right because generally like you said MOI or the forgiveness of blades are going to be lower than the mallet itself now they also have helped us fitters by giving us slant necks and more toe hang in mallets as well so I've seen both um, I would say I've fit more blades than mallets. This okay. Just, yep. just pure on people look and their feel wise. Got it. Okay, so putter. So that's all the clubs. Now we got a couple of things here left to talk about. Yep. Uh, let's first talk about golf ball. Sure. So golf ball is an interesting one. Obviously, it's really important to fit someone into the right golf ball, and it yep. definitely does matter. There's going to be differences based Huge. on how you swing the club and how you deliver it. Feel. Yep. Um, a little bit, kind of work your way back, kind of from where the putter starts, right? And yeah. then got to work your way back through the bag. Uh, absolutely, for feel, right? Yep. So, you know, one of the golf balls I like just personally um, is the Strixon Z-Star Divide. Something new for this year. Now, I'm a player that I struggle to see ball flight outside. You know, a white golf ball, I see it go up about 100 yards and I lose it. So, this golf ball helps me out there. Okay. So, I can see kind of it spinning and you know, track it the whole way down, but it also is a huge win for me putting. Yeah, so to see the ball fly, now this is interesting, I haven't really done much with this ball, I've seen it, yeah. I've used it in the, in the putting studio, but yeah. I've never played with it on the course. Yeah. Do you place that so it spins this way when you hit a shot off the tee intentionally, or do you try and line it up directly like this to help with alignment? I, or is there any specific way that you do off the tee and then obviously on the green you've got the ability to line it up straight? Right. I, I like to line it up the same way on the tee as I, as I do on the green. Okay. I like to line it up kind of straight on the line that I want to start it to. Helps not only my setup and routine, but it helps me know, hey, am I, if I'm losing a little bit right today, that's me, right? Because I know the alignment's good. So. Yep. But other than that, I, I think it's a great ball. It's fun to watch hitting a wedge into the green with it. It's a really, really fun there. Softer cover golf ball too. So for me, I'm big on feel, so I like the compression of the golf ball. I like to feel that kind of mush almost, right? So for me, this is a great ball. It's a great ball for other players as well, kind of mid-range on the budget scale, but it helps in numerous spots out there on the golf course. That's why I'd recommend it. Got it. And then finally, golf bag. Yeah. Is there a favorite? So we have a lot of customers come and ask, like, what, what golf bag should I, should I play? Or yeah. you get done with the fitting, and you're like, well, do you have a golf bag? And you're like, well, no, I, I, no, I don't really have a bag. Well, I have an older bag. Right. Is there, a, is there a favorite golf bag that you like to, 
tell golfers, hey, you, if you, do you carry, do you ride? Right. Right. Um, you're looking for good straps or, you, or you're just looking for the convenience of putting clubs in the bag? Right, right, and you brought up the first great question, of what do you do with the bag? Is it going straight from the trunk to the car or is it going on your back and we're hoofing it for a while? You know, like the bag we have set up here, it's got four pockets alone in it. So the clubs are gonna get tighter together. They might, you know, jangle a little bit back and forth there. Generally, when I look at a golf bag, I want to see more pockets. I want individual pockets to help that player uh, minimize the damage to the club going back and forth. It also helps with the ease of bringing it in and out as well. So that's generally the direction I would try to go for players. Okay. But if they want to carry, then ultimately we have to go lighter, which yep. means less pockets on a golf bag too. So it's really player dependent, uh, varies from brand to brand. Um, quality wise, you know, you get what you pay for. Right. The more you spend, the longer it's going to last yeah. as well. I think um, that's I think that's very true with golf bags. Mm -hmm. and I just you can just see it if you look at different golf bags. You see how kind of they're made. Yeah. Um, some are constructed really well, stitching just and you see the stands. They last yeah. a lot, a lot longer. Yeah. And I'm not going to say which ones perform best. Which <laughs> I don't, don't want to do that. But just do do your research. Look yeah. at reviews on, on golf bags. Sure. I think you bring out an interesting point um, on the on the four pockets versus more pockets. Mm -hmm. I agree. If you're if you're walking most of the time, yeah, you want to go for like right. a, a, a four pocket option. Yeah. Um, but if you don't walk very often, pushing it around or you're riding mm -hmm. all the time, yeah. having those individual holes. It's, it's going to protect your clubs. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Especially with the amount of money that we spend on clubs nowadays, we want to protect them a little bit. So the bag is extremely important, just like all the other clubs as well. Right. Yeah. Golf bag's important. Yep. Um, yeah. So this is interesting. This is uh, quite the, the bag you put together. You've got five manufacturers in there, mm -hmm. um, which is, it's, I don't know, usually maybe I see a bag that's got three or four different yeah. ma manufacturers in there. Yep. Some golfers like to just stick with the same manufacturer all the way, they're right. brand loyal. Right. Um, but you have to give and want to keep your eyes and, eyes and ears open to see which is performing 100%. well, and then come on in and get fit and right. make sure that you're playing the right clubs. Absolutely, absolutely. So guys, if you kind of like what you saw here, what pieces in the bag are in there for you? How many manufacturers do you have? Let us know, share, hit that comment button, hit the like, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Thanks guys for watching, we'll see you next time.